Humans have been living in Britain for hundreds of thousands of years. Over time, we have been affected by and had an effect on our environment, shaping the landscapes that we see around us. And by studying the archaeological and geological remains, we can learn how people live within their environment and how those people adapted to climate change. And maybe even find clues to help us approach the challenges that we face today. Around 18,000 years ago, by the time of the last ice age, humans had been intermittently present in Britain for at least 800,000 years. And it would have looked unrecognisable to us today. Glaciers and ice caps shrouded the landscape, making it inhospitable for human habitation. And during this period, Britain was connected to Europe by an icy lowland plain called Doggerland, and the North Sea didn't exist yet. Then, around 12,000 years ago, the climate started to change, and summer temperatures increased drastically. Sea levels rose, and Doggerland's frozen tundra was replaced by temperate grassland, rolling hills, woodland valleys, marshes, and swampy lagoons. Red deer, aurochs, and even woolly mammoths attracted greater numbers of seasonal hunter-gatherers. So as the glaciers thawed, Britain's landscape was slowly being revealed, and people began moving inland to the valleys and wetlands. As the sea levels continued to rise, Doggerland was drowned completely. Communities were forced into higher ground in what is today Britain, France, and the Netherlands. And Britain, now an island, was covered in a huge wild wood where brown bears and elk roamed freely. And beyond the wild wood, areas of grassland, fenland, heaths and moors blanketed the landscape. Domesticated plants and animals were introduced to Britain around 6,000 years ago, although it took another 2,500 years for a farming lifestyle to become fully established. These new farmers needed space and began clearing the wild wood and surrounding areas. And it was during this time that humans began to significantly impact their environment. The farmers still led a semi-nomadic life, supplementing their diet with native animals and berries in addition to their crops and livestock. They built impressive structures, often incorporating natural features like rivers, springs and hills. We now think of these as ritual landscapes where communities place a spiritual significance on the world around them. Around 3,500 years ago, settlements became more permanent and large coaxial fields were laid out. And as food production grew, so did the population. Soon, competition and rivalries led to the construction of boundary markers and the earliest hill forts. These large, elaborate hilltop enclosures dominated the landscape and were surrounded by outer ditches and banked earth walls. And people started to mine and use iron to make their tools and weapons with great skill. And communities began gathering in larger numbers around some of these defensive hill forts for protection, trade and manufacture. Caliba Artribatum one of the early towns in Britain was a hub of activity. Political decisions were made, coins were struck, and people could buy and sell their wares. But when the Romans invaded Britain in 43 AD, these timber and earth defences were no match for the invading force. And bringing with them skills in engineering and stonemasonry, the Romans began an extensive programme of building to control and exploit the landscape. During their occupation, the Romans built a 73 mile long coast to coast wall. They built hundreds of forts and camps, thousands of towns, villas, temples and baths and farms, and even roads which had foundations and drainage channels. But when the empire collapsed and the Roman force left Britain, the remaining population abandoned many of their buildings to ruin. And it wasn't until 400 years later that King Alfred of Wessex really kick-started more sustained urbanisation with the creation of fortified burr towns. 
These towns were often built around natural features and boundaries in the landscape. But by the 16th century, towns and cities had expanded significantly and we see many man-made centres influencing climate for the first time. With the growing demand for agricultural land, humans looked for new ways of exploiting their environments. And one solution was to transform the natural wetlands into fertile farmland with the help of some Dutch engineers. And another was the use of the artificial canal network. These transformed Britain and by the 19th century there were over 4,000 miles of interconnected waterways across the country. During the height of the Industrial Revolution, the world's first steam locomotive was used in 1812 to transport large quantities of coal. Extensive railways ploughed through the land, transporting goods and people and connecting cities as far as Edinburgh and Gloucester. In just 50 years, the population of the UK doubled. Rural life was shunned in favour of the new opportunities that industrial towns and cities offered. But these urban centres struggled to cope. Conditions were poor, life expectancy was low and the landscape suffered. The advancement in technology and science wasn't just industrial. In 1860, Irish physicist John Tyndall was the first person to discover the link between atmospheric gases and global warming. He found that they let sunlight in, but impeded heat from getting out. And by the turn of the 20th century, Swedish chemist Svant Arrhenius developed this theory. He speculated that low levels of carbon dioxide may have caused the Ice Age, and that an increase in carbon dioxide caused by the use of coal might warm the planet. We have now entered an age where human activity is having a significant impact on the planet's climate and ecosystems. The 1950s saw the start of the Great Acceleration, a period of unprecedented human activity adversely affecting the planet. Our atmosphere and oceans are warming, ecosystems are being affected and more animals are under threat of endangerment and extinction. Coastal erosion is occurring along 17% of the UK coastline, with land disappearing at a rate of 4 metres per year in some areas. In the UK and across the globe, we are witnessing more extreme and unpredictable weather like violent storms, raging fires, cold snaps and devastating floods. We are at a critical moment and what we do next will affect our environment for generations to come. As the shapers and custodians of Britain's landscapes, we face the challenge of understanding and reversing the negative impacts that we are having on them. By understanding the changes that our environment has gone through in the past, both through natural and human causes, we can see how people and nature have responded. Although our climate history may be set in stone, our future isn't.